Who's got the best trash talk game on the U.S. women's national team? I just heard that I do, which I I don't I don't know if I From really who? agree, but I think I just talk a lot. Good evening, good morning, a big you bright to all of you who've got a sudden nasty case of World Cup fever. We blessed masses who sleep all day, watch football all night glued to this historic tournament and filling its narrative across the globe as the US women's national team, the most decorated side in the game, has begun its fight for an unprecedented, frankly quite bonkers, three-peat glory. And I'm genuinely thrilled to welcome back for a deep dive into what Trinity Rodman has told us is the greatest coffee-propelled team in world football, the US women's national team, an old friend of this show, the pride of Marietta, Georgia, the veteran defender of O.L. Reign, a bolt of sunshine on every team and every locker room playlist she is on. Welcome to Direct From Down Under, presented by Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. It's Emily Sonnet. <laughs> Raj, what's going on? Oh, Emily, you tell me, how is New Zealand treating you have you seen enough of the the sheep the chill vibes the lord of the rings to know that you want to move there yeah you know honestly uh all the chill vibes here girls are loving it um glad to obviously be here for a few days a few weeks uh ahead of the tournament what is the weirdest or most curious or just most entertaining thing you've encountered there the kiwis the hobbits the crispy cookies uh honestly probably just the bus rides <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we're, go- we're going o- we're going over bridges we're seeing water everywhere um then we're going there back to the hotel do our recovery all business here really this is it a b all business that's what we think of <laughs> when we think of emily sonnet i do believe by the way there was a video of some rugby being played sophia smith contemplating a transition to New Zealand's most beloved game. Yeah, I saw a little bit of that. Not sure um, if she has the skill for it, but if she puts her mind to it, I think she can She can have that switch if she wants it. I want to talk to you about this all-business World Cup because this is a serious question. How do you sleep at a World Cup in camp? Is it is it normal or is it such a high-stress environment that you're constantly dreaming football dreams? Constantly, constantly having these football dreams. But what's incredible is that we all have our nightly routines, maybe our own pillows that we brought from home. So we feel, we feel, we feel like we're comfortable here. Um, but yeah, uh, too many football dreams, but obviously... Really? Yeah. Uh, last night, yes. But mo- I think the girls are talking about how they've had um, a few of those. But I think it's just excitement. How is this squad, this culture, this reality feel different to the last one? It's, you know, it's a different group, different journey. What I love, we have so many personalities uh, off field. So having this, having this connection um, with the young, younger players, with now, I guess, people keep saying veteran player to me, but older players, it doesn't really feel like there's a much disconnect. Um, but I think that's what's helping um, having those connections to, to the on field. What was your biggest learning from 2019 about what it takes to thrive and survive during that month-long journey, please God, that is a World Cup, a journey that's filled with these crazy spikes of adrenaline and hype around the games and then a ton of boredom in between of them? Right. Um, I think I learned that it does take everyone as a tournament so long. Um, so it's people playing later in the tournament who's starting the tournament, right? But also this on-field, this boredom in between. How can you fill that with fun um, to be stress-free? Um, because there are there is so much time um, in between games. You have 40 new players in this squad. Lindsay Horan did an interview yesterday where she called them 40 new World Cuppies, which I love, <laughs> the little chickies. Um, who of the new mob is the funniest and why? When I answer this... I, I have a high standard, very high standard. Give so I, I, I'm usually going for the one-liners, okay? So people who can get their little bit edge, their little edge in, you, you don't know they're listening. My final answer with this is Ashley Sanchez. You, you don't know she's listening, but then she fits in a one-liner and you're like, it's pretty funny. <laughs> like, wait, where did you come from? <laughs> is she like, is she future Lavelle standard? Mm, on, her, on her way, on her way because she has a goofy side as well but the one liners is what's going to bring her and edge her edge her up edge her up there is a talent so backline um in that squad but with becky sauerbrun a devastating injury it's also 
a relatively inexperienced one. How has that changed the way that you see your role? You know, is there a leadership role that you've assumed? Oh uh, yeah, I think a little bit. Uh, obviously, huge, huge shoes to fill with Becky. Um, so, kind of leading by example, um, I think is the biggest one for me. Can I get all the principles right? Can I? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can other people see me doing the right things? Um, and if they are wanting to ask questions, obviously there. There's an excellent article by Mirin Fader. She wrote um, about you, something you did in training. And Trinity Rodman talked about it last night. Um, you kept shutting Trinity down. Um, and then she asked you, you know, after getting frustrated, how can she beat you? And you took time <laughs> to explain to her. Do you remember this? You told her exactly how to beat you. And I thought about that, Emily Sonnet. And I was just blown away by your commitment to the greater good. You, know, you, you are playing for on-field time. You are trying to impress Vlatko too. And then suddenly you're handling Trinity, the keys to shake you loose for the good, for the good of the greater. Can you talk about that mindset? Because it comes across as so bloody selfless. Yeah, I think I've played against a lot of the greats, you know, just looking in WSL play. Um, I always say training with the women's national team. It's an honor because I'm playing against, I'm de having to defend against the best players in the world. So understanding how they beat me or what they're thinking um, from a defender's perspective, I think that's something that's very useful that you can tell another forward who's going to be now playing against other countries and not just me, like when I'm positioned a certain way, this is how I think or start thinking about this as a way that you can maybe beat another opponent that's really effective. But yeah, I don't know. I think I really want everyone to be successful. <laughs> I think that's what it really comes down to. And I want to see success with everyone on this team. How do you see your role on this squad, Sonic? Because you are, you are a self-styled bolt of joy. You know, when I, I interview NHL players, they talk a lot always. They love to talk about the importance of being a glue guy on a squad, you know, the one who brings the team together consciously and unconsciously. Do you relate to that? And if so, you know, how? I think I do relate to that a little bit. Um, I, I call it the, this corner. So it's like number 14, 15, 16. So that's me, Megan Rapino, and then Rose, right? So I want to, I want to say we're the glue, but I think our humor, so I'll be put myself in that. I think our humor really helps de-stress and kind of have this like, hey, everyone, like, we're going to come and still stay together, even though it's a high stress situation. And that's one thing I think I've learned a lot from Pino um, and that Rose and I can kind of like hold on to um, to help the group. How would you describe that humor in your own words? Magical. <laughs> I mean, they really don't, they really, they, they won't know how good they've had it until we're all gone. They won't. Oh, God I'm bless. trying, I'm trying, Raj, I'm trying to tell them. I mean, this is some good stuff. <laughs> this is some really good stuff. You didn't even have to pause. Just like, you were just like, how would you describe my humor? It's gold. I don't miss here in the vibes corner. And just if I do, out. but if I do, if I do miss, I you know Rose Lavelle is right there. Megan Rapinoe is right there. And some other one-liners like Sanchez. So like, I mean, we talk about on field, you know, having each other's back. This, this, the off field, they, they, people have, people have my back. They have these one-liners. At Giannamello, what is the weirdest or funniest, but retrospectively most important thing that Becky Sauerbrunn has taught you? I don't know if it's anything that she has said, but the way that she trains as if every training is like a game is something when I understood early being on the national team and you have to train every day like you're preparing for a game. You're, being, you're preparing for the biggest match. And you can see that in her preparation beforehand, prehab, how she's at taking every rep seriously. Um, so nothing that she said, but obviously like taking those actions and then applying to what I can maybe do. Who on the U.S. women's national team squad would make it furthest in the Hunger Games and why? Christy Mewis. She is, she, I think she will find a way to win. And that's just pure mentality, all business. That's just her mentality. I think the survivor in her, <laughs> I think she's like, with my mentality, with this, no chance. I am absolutely surviving.
Who's got the best trash talk game on the U.S. women's national team? I just heard that I do, which I I don't I don't know if I From really who? agree, but I think I just talk a lot, and I don't know what I'm saying, but I I don't think I am, I don't think I am in that category, but I do have quantity of what I'm saying. <laughs> How would you answer? You so you're game for the quantity, not the quality. Who's who else is like? I I, I, I put a lot of money on Alyssa Thompson as a dark horse. Just, <laughs> Yeah. Just, just, just fierce. Yeah, it doesn't talk often, but when she does, <laughs> it's like, it's like show stopping, uh, show stopping. Yes. <laughs> God, make that joke, make that joke. Question from another listener, Trinity Rodman. That Trinity Rodman wants to know, Emily Sonnet, when are you going to post the dance that you and Rose Lavelle do to fight song on TikTok? The world <laughs> needs to know. Well. If Trinity knew me, she knew I would never post on TikTok, but it could be coming to another platform near you. By, by the way, when you said another platform, do you mean Broadway? <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely <laughs> meant Broadway. <laughs> Broadway and or street performance um, live. I'm Astina, I'm Astina Rogers. It's Sonnet and Lavelle. It's the same thing. Yeah, you can actually only catch this live. No, I, the, <laughs> this dance, I think, was created in about four minutes. Rose and I are pretty quick collaborating we filmed it first take and then i think we sent it to either sanchez and trinity or we showed trinity and sanchez and we said we think you guys should um send something back they never did but i think they were impressed last one from a fan at unqualified woso who is not trinity rodman i can assure you emily sonnet you have done so much you've seen so much which is genuinely true what three things are still on your bucket list i want to travel that's not attached to soccer and work I get really jealous when people have summers and they have summers off. I love being at the World Cup. I love being at the World Cup. This is like the highest honor, right? But seeing people on off World Cup years, being able to travel, eat all the pasta, eat all the croissants, Raj, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I, I, yeah, <laughs> you know what they... That's something I, I want to go eat different cuisines. I want to travel. I want to have non-work related travel because soccer has obviously introduced... So many beautiful places to me. Oh, so essentially, to distill that, you want to be less all business for a period of time. I want to be less all business for a period of time. Last question for you, which actually was it was triggered by Becky Sauerbrun when she announced that she wouldn't be part of this World Cup when she you know when she stepped off this team that she's captained so bloody often to mount this three peat attempt. She gave very specific advice, and she told the team to her words enjoy the moment hold on to it savor it Flatko Andonovsky Megan Rapino, other players are, have since really repeated that advice that for all the hype for all the competition all the noise all the wonder it's important that this team as individuals as a community hold on to this moment Emily how are you able to do that are you able to do that what moments of this early stage in this historic event do you hope to hold on to it? When I think of last World Cup and I think of Becky's words, it's it, the, the tournament goes by so fast. So how can you hold on to those smaller moments, those little victories um, to help propel you into the next game, into the next phase um, of the tournament? So how can you de-stress, kind of savor the moment? How can you... Uh, be excited to win a group stage game, a quarter five. Like, how, like, hold on to those moments, those joys. And I think that's what I'm going to do because the tournament goes by so quickly um, to have the whole full experience of being at the World Cup. God bless. Fight song will never sound the same to me again. I'm taking from this L-A-B, F-A-P-O-T, less all business for a period of time. It's a tattoo that I'm going to be getting. It's a tattoo that World we're Cup. going to be getting. <laughs> yes, if you win the World yeah. Cup, we're going to be getting that. We're going to get matches. But Emily Sonnet, I do want to raise this bad line to you in toast. You honestly are. You are a bolt of joy <laughs> off on the field. You're a bolt of joy off the field. A ruthless competitor on it. Quite potty mouth by your own admission. And most importantly, you're incredibly selfless. You give it all to this elite mentality to you you indomitable spirit thank you raj 
Courage. Listen to the full version of this podcast and all our podcasts wherever you get your pods. But first, subscribe here for more Men in Blazers videos and courage. Go, go, go.